Hi guys, my name is Patrick Foley and I'm a uh, freelance 3D artist or generalist uh, working in the, I guess, primarily ad field. Um, and I make a lot of uh, abstract renders like this uh, in my free time. And I think these do really well on social platforms like Instagram and what have you. So uh, I think we're going to make something kind of like this. Um, and we'll kind of make it from scratch so you can see the thought process and how everything goes on. So, All right, so uh, we're pretty much going to bump this video out into three different segments. And uh, we'll try to chop it up, keep it uh, bite-sized for you guys. And uh, I think that's how we'll do this one. And uh, so we should be good to go. So we have a blank template here in Cinema 4D. And of course, we want to start with a sphere. And uh, as you can see, uh, just a basic sphere here. And uh, we're going to go through everything from modeling this thing, texturing, lighting, the whole thing. So uh, you'll be able to see everything kind of come to fruition from scratch. So uh, the first thing we want to do is uh, check the segments here. So if we go to display and uh, lines, we can see how many polys this thing has. And uh, in our attributes manager, we have uh, 24. Let's kind of bump that up. Uh, actually bump that down. Let's go, because uh, we're going to be uh, um, kind of cutting these segments up in a little bit. So let's go with something like 16. And uh, that should be good. So uh, we can make that editable by clicking this guy or just clicking C on your keyboard. And now what you can do is actually select all of these segments like this, do whatever you need to do. But uh, in our uh, instance here, we're gonna go and uh, select all of the faces uh, by hitting Control A and uh, making sure we go to, just right clicking here and uh, extrude inner. Um, now this might not do anything if you have preserved groups on. So what you're gonna wanna do is uncheck preserved groups and now what you'll see is if we zoom in here and just drag, you'll start to see these things kind of separate. Uh, and that's what we want. So I think what we can do is uh, go to the point where it's about here, making sure that the segments at the top right here don't get too small. Otherwise, they'll go uh, and kind of get all wonky like that. So we just want to make sure we get a nice little subdivision here, which works. So we can uh, once we get something like this, we can just delete those segments and right now it looks a little weird um, and low poly but that is totally fine um, the reason we're doing this is so we can create like an outer shell layer um, and the next thing we want to do is give this thing some kind of uh, uh, extrusion so what we can do is go from the sphere let's go to simulate cloth cloth surface um, and that's uh, gonna give us this thickness here so we can take this sphere and drag it up and you can see naturally um, the cloth service uh, subdivides this thing a little bit, which is cool sometimes. I don't think we'll need this for this instance. We're just going to take the thickness and uh, we're going to say let's go negative six. That looks good for now. And now we got some thickness, which looks good. Um, and the next thing we want to do is make this a little bit higher poly. So, uh, what you could do is take the cloth service and just subdivide this thing until you're happy. This gives it like a cool, kind of a globe looking effect. And, uh, but I don't think we need that. So we can go to zero. And uh, what we can do is hit the, uh, let's go and grab a subdivision surface. So we're just gonna grab this and put it in the hierarchy and make uh, everything else a child of the subdivision surface. And that's gonna create these cool little circles that you saw before. And uh, depending on what you do at the beginning, how many segments you choose, that's gonna give you uh, how many circles you're going to have here. So we're going to take the subdivision surface and bump it up one more notch so that it's nice and smooth. So we're looking good. I think the other thing I did in that uh, with that last render was uh, add something inside so we can create another sphere. And uh, as you'll see, we'll have to scale this up. So let's just take the uh, radius and bump it up a little bit. Not too much, but giving, their, giving it a little bit of space. And then taking the segments to something like 80. And now everything's all smooth inside. Uh, nice little encapsulation there. So that looks good. Um, we're, on a, we're in pretty good shape here. Uh, the next thing we'll want to do is actually um, a little bit unorthodoxically take, uh, let's create a camera. And remember, we're going to be using Octane in a little bit. But for now, a regular camera is fine. And let's hop inside the camera. And we're going to take the camera here and uh, zero out all the coordinates just to get our composition correct. So we know what we're seeing soon. So let's zero everything out. Let's take the uh, Z. Let's go negative 800. Oops, negative 800. And uh, take these coordinates of the rotation and zero them out. Now we're looking good. 
a little bit zoomed out here, so we're going to take uh, this object uh, within the camera and go from classic to portrait. And of course, we're looking a little big there, uh, but if I want to keep the uh, camera settings as they are, let's just create, let's just select the sphere and the subdivision surface, and uh, click T on your keyboard and scale everything down a little bit. And I think that looks good. If you want to get everything out of the way, um, or get the platform out of the way that we had before, I think, uh, notice we have this platform here, along with some bubbles, and uh, yeah, this nice cool ring around this thing with some nice subdivision surface. Um, so what we're going to do is uh, create this platform, which is just a simple cylinder in Cinema 4D. And uh, we're going to drag this all the way down. And we're going to expand it to something that looks pretty natural, something like that. And then if you uh, hop into this, uh, this mode here that shows you all the angles, you can also get there by clicking this guy. And uh, we're going to zoom in on this tab and make sure we're all good here. Not intersecting anything, even though it doesn't really matter, I guess. But uh, this is looking good. Next thing we want to do is go back to the lines mode just to see how many segments we're working with. We're going to need a little bit more. Let's go to 120. Just to make sure uh, none of these edges look too hard. And then we're going to go to caps and fill it. Um, and we don't want this much of a bevel, so let's go and crank that to something that's like a nice lip, but it'll give us some highlights that'll strike off of it. So I guess that comes out to be like 1.7 something, which looks fine. Um, we can take the display back to, uh, let's go quick shading. And uh, we're looking good. And uh, let me get one drink real quick. Perfect, so the next thing we're gonna do is get those, uh, let's get that ring going. So uh, I think what we can do to start this thing, uh, notice this ring here is uh, not just a ring, but you got all these splashes coming off of this thing, but they're, they're actually, it almost looks like there's dynamics going on here, uh, some fluid stuff going on, but uh, actually none of that. Um, we're gonna be using the volume measure. So uh, first thing we wanna do is grab a, let's see, you grab anything from a spline, a circle spline, or you could grab a torus here. Um, I think which will be easiest will be the uh, torus, I guess. Um, and let's just create one and uh, rotate it by clicking R. And give it a nice little axis, axis here. Um, shrinking that, making it much thinner. Something like that. Something that shows kind of the depth there. And uh, to me, that looks pretty good. Um, and we're looking good there. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do here is uh, make sure these kind of splashy balls are popping off of this thing, which is really cool and uh, is available in uh, the volume measure feature. So what we can do is take this torus here, which is the ring, and uh, make that a child of the volume builder and the volume measure. So let's drag this into the builder as a child. As you can see, the voxels are looking pretty big. We need to kind of uh, increase that resolution there. Uh, but what I like to do is just make the builder inside the mesher, just so we can see what this looks like as geometry. And it's, if you can see, uh, we really don't have that much geometry, which uh, I guess we'll want to pay attention to. Uh, so volume builder, let's click this guy. And voxel size, let's get that down to like four. Uh, that should be good for now. We'll probably decrease that down to two at some point. We'll see. Um, but now for the balls. So what we need is uh, Just to show you how this thing works is if we create another sphere and make that smaller Just drag this here. You guys don't have to do this part I'm just showing you if I were to drag the sphere into the hierarchy here You can see it is now part of the mesh. So anywhere I drag it. It kind of becomes part of notice. We're getting some uh, We're not looking really appealing there with that kind of edge ripping off pretty low poly, but we want to smooth that out eventually um, so what we'll do is, uh, so obviously we're not going to create like 50 million of these things and pop them around. That would be ridiculous. So we can delete that. We can create another sphere. And uh, with this one, you're going to want to make sure you create the size of maybe the average ball that will be hopping off of this thing. So I would say something pretty small, uh, something like that. Once we have that right, uh, that is good. And uh, I believe it's okay if this thing isn't centered or anything for now because we're going to hop that into a uh, cloner. So we're going to grab a MoGraph cloner sphere on top of their sphere as a child of the cloner. 
and naturally this thing uh, is in linear mode. We don't need to worry about that. Let's go from linear mode to object mode. And uh, because we're in the volume mesher, we're going to want to make sure this instance mode is set to instance and not render instance, which you're probably used to, which saves a lot of time. And that's because uh, when we're hopping in the volume mesher, uh, it needs to calculate all these different instances for this, or all these separate instances, yes, for the, uh, the geometry. And if you put that in as render instance, they're not going to show. So everything looks fine here. Uh, before we hop this in, let's make sure this all looks good. Let's go torus as the object. So drag the torus down to the object. And this is looking great, besides the fact that nothing is actually connected. So what we want to do in this stage is make sure that everything is uh, kind of mapped out how we want it before we connect the geometry, because it'll save time. So let's take the count up. Let's go to like uh, maybe 100, 150. Uh, it looks a little cluttered, but uh, don't worry about that yet. Uh, what we can do is take the cloner and go, this is where you get all randomized. So let's go to Effector, Random. Now everything is bouncing off. But uh, if you'll notice this one, nothing is bouncing off that high. So we want everything to be generally a little bit closer than that. So what we can do is just take these down to like 20, 20, 20. Uh, still a little bit. Let's go down to 10, 10, 10. Um, and that should be good. And then the scale, let's randomize the scale a little bit, uniform. Uh, let's just go a little bit crazy with it, maybe like 0.4. And that should be good. And then because they're perfect, perfect spheres, you don't have to worry about the rotation at all. You won't really see a change. So let's see what happens when we take the cloner and put it on top of the torus and within the builder. Already we're getting a really good result here. Um, it does look a little bit low poly, so we can fix that with a couple things. I would say fixing that by going to the volume builder, taking this down to two. This looks great, but now everything looks a little bit too rigidy. <clears throat> um, so what we can do is take a smoother, and the cool thing about these deformers is that they work within the hierarchy of the volume mesher and the builder. So what we can do is take the soothing, the smoothing deformer and put that in between. And now you're seeing all this cool um, kind of bubbly formations become much more organic and smooth. So we can take the stiffness, the stiffness down to zero and iterations, you can play with that, whatever you think looks best. Um, but you can see there's much more geometry than previously there. Um, but I think we're good there. And of course, since this is all non-destructive, we can take the cloner and take this to like 200 if we want to beef it up a little bit. And to me, that looks pretty good. We got some flying off there. Um, and again, even more customization here, we can take the volume measure and uh, increase or decrease the uh, volume range threshold, which will pretty much make this thing a little bit blobbier or uh, thinner, however you want to use that term. Uh, so that looks good, about where we had it. So I think this is our first stopping point here, and uh, I think we're at a pretty decent point. Um, uh, in the next video, I'll show you kind of how to refine this shape and uh, add in some other elements before we start lighting and texturing and uh, I think that'll be a good liftoff point so I think that should be good. Take care. See you in the next video.